you guys are definitely reaching out. We are getting your emails, your tweets, and a lot of you are visiting our social sites like Pinterest. Hey Tommy, would you believe that our most popular pin, one of our most popular pins, is about how to size a kitchen island? I'm not surprised, Kevin. I don't remember the last time I did a kitchen that didn't have at least one island in it. Perfect. All right. Well, good enough reason to talk about it. So, um, in terms of overall size, let's start there. What do you think? Well, years ago, having an island that was just a standalone butcher block was pretty common. Yep. But now people want them a little bit bigger. So I would say the minimum size for an island would be maybe three feet by five feet. Okay. That's a nice size, all-purpose island. Sounds perfect. In terms of the clearance around the island, that's got to be an important measurement. That's very key. You want to make sure that you have adequate space around the island. So, for example, for the face of the island right here to the face of the wall or the cabinet behind it should be a minimum of 42 inches. Gives you enough room to walk back and forth through that area. And somebody can work here and somebody can get by. So while you are working over there, a lot of us like to sit at the island. The kids are having lunch. They've got a chair right here. In terms of the clearance on this size, is it still right. 42? No. The distance from there has to be a little bit bigger. So from the face of the island to the wall behind you or cabinets mm -hmm. right here needs to be about 60 inches so that you can walk by comfortably. Kids coming in from school could carry their books or whatever and get by without any problem. It makes a lot of sense. You're going to be pushing that chair in and out. Perfect. Right, right. In terms of the height of an island. Now, the height of an island usually matches the height of the countertop. Okay. And that's 36 inches. Right. All right. So now, if you want to put a bar stool or sit at that, the key to that is you want to make sure that the overhang of the countertop is a minimum of 15 inches. That gives you plenty of room to sit comfortably and have your knees in straight. Okay. Now sometimes we raise the island up, or at least the front part of an island, because we want to sit in a bar stool up top. Right, and so this, when it drops up like that, that's 42 inches, and that's bar height. Ah, right. right. Now that when you come up higher, the overhang distance from the face of the island to the outside of the countertop can be less, 12 inches. Good. You still need that adequate space for your knees to get in there and be comfortable. All right, two quick questions for you. In terms of putting a stove or a sink in the island, a lot of people do it. What's your thought? A lot of people do do it, but the bar, I think that the island needs to be big enough to handle that because it can interfere with the kids sitting right. there and people standing around talking. They like to do that, and you have a workspace, so it needs to be separate. So an island this size is not going to hold a stove in a second. And final, materials. We've got the material for the countertop going all the way around the kitchen. What yeah. about an island top material? Well, you can match the top of whatever you have here, but a lot of people like to celebrate, and they like to show something different, so they have a nice wood top right here. Stone over there, butcher block over exactly. here. Exactly. All right, well, uh, that's good information, Tommy. guys are definitely reaching out. We are getting your emails, your tweets, and a lot of you are visiting our social sites like Pinterest. Hey Tommy, would you believe that our most popular pin, one of our most popular pins, is about how to size a kitchen island? I'm not surprised, Kevin. 